greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's my joy to welcome you on our online services and thank you for continuing being with us. Today I'm welcoming you in our sermon and today I'm sharing something on fighting the good fight of the faith. Fighting the good fight of the faith. And I'll read the word of God from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12, the Bible says these words, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Paul was urging Timothy, his spiritual son, to fight the good fight of the faith. At times, we need to be reminded to maintain the resilience of fighting Christian battles. Christian life is a life of battling the works of the enemy, the works of the flesh, the powers of darkness. And we ought to be like frontline soldiers who are fighting for the glory of God, fighting to ensure that we serve the Almighty God in the way that he desires. And I would like to share something on the nature of spiritual warfare. Because we don't fight like the way the world fights. When you read the Bible in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, the Bible says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Verse 4, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take cap captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That is the nature of our warfare. We do not fight as the world does. In fact, even the weapons of our warfare are not the weapons of this world. And I'd like you to see the weapons that we fight with whenever we are engaging ourselves in spiritual warfare. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord, and in his mighty power. Verse 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Then verse 12 says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Paul was categorical as he wrote to the Ephesians church. He wrote to them concerning the spiritual warfare and told them our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, authorities, powers of this dark world. And when we fight them, our weapons are different. And when you continue reading that scripture, you hear he mentioning something about the belt of truth, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and prayer as also a weapon, offensive weapon against all the works of darkness. So that's the nature of our weapons. You need to be clothed with the truth. You need to equip yourself with faith. You need to equip yourself with righteousness. You need also to pray constantly. When we live in this world, that's how we fight the devil. We cannot take a gun. We cannot have anything physical. But when we walk by truth and righteousness, and faith, and when we obey the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, 
And when we pray consistently, then we overcome in our spiritual warfare. And while Paul was speaking to Timothy, there's something that he told Timothy. It's good to fight the good fight of the faith, holding on to the eternal life which the Lord called for us. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, he speaks these words. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life which you are called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. And when you read First, Tim uh, First Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, he speaks these words. Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them you may fight the good fight. Verse 19, holding on to faith and a good conscience. And some have rejected this and so have shipwrecked their faith. So Paul is urging Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Holding on to faith and good conscience. May we fight this battle holding on to faith and a good conscience so that we can overcome the works of the enemy. And Paul saw also speaks something very, very, very important in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. And we say it was while he was concluding his life, he wrote these powerful words, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. Verse 7 says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Paul was confident. Even as he was winding up his ministry, all his life on earth, he had fought the good fight. He had finished the race. He had kept the faith. And that's why I'm urging you, fight the good fight of the faith. Keep on being fully armed with all the spiritual weapons. Fight the devil. Please God, so that at the end of the day, the Lord will be glorified in your life. Maintain a good conscience. Maintain faith. Keep on standing firm. And I believe if we can all heed to God's word to fight the good fight, we can then have a wonderful finish, like Apostle Paul, who was confidently saying, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. He had no reason to be ashamed, because he knew he had kept the faith, he had done the will of God, and you and me, we are supposed to fight this good fight, so that likewise we can also say with confidence, we have fought the good fight. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for reminding us that we are in spiritual warfare. And help us to be resilient as we fight the works of darkness. May we please you so that you, con you can continue blessing our lives. I pray for all those that have heard your word. May you bless them. May you meet them at the point of every need. May you heal the sick. May you encourage the discouraged. And I commit them to your care so that you, con you can continue being their helper. And all this I pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you are there and you haven't received Jesus as your Savior. Follow after me. And the Lord will bring you this wonderful victory of fighting for the faith. Follow after me. Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you, forgive my sins. From today I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Write my name in the book of life. And I pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you.